you please put your hands together for Abby Curtis. Michelangelo's meals. For food, he pays in poems. He tells of winter flowers folding. For thoughts on death, he eats ripe melon, thick wine, olives moving over themselves. He gives knowledge, calling his payments squibs. Minuscule explosives yielding packages of bread and cheeses. His stomach stretches, his hand spreading over strips of paper that curl like butter. Heaven is no more or less than greens or pickled trout, and loves are meats with too much pepper or without. Here he lies sleeping as the acids are digesting, pulping what he's chewed to letters. From under those he wakes and finds the bloom on grapes, then opens it to cloud-hung purple lakes. Spilling from the canvas, spread like blonde tresses around the wooden block, ready to soak in the blood According to the books, she only panicked once, crying blindly. What shall I do? Where is it? Seeking a place to lay her head, hoping it would be quick, almost eager. Once, I didn't know you. It seems unlikely, unforgivable. I think of this painting as a portal the many shades of grey in the stone background suggest a staircase, a door, elsewhere. Wait. Show me where to reach my hands. Wait. I'm not ready. This is a poem that only uses the vowel of O all the way through, and this is a cautionary tale uh, for anyone who's ever got so stoned in public they couldn't find their way home again. This is called Two Moons for Mons. No motor. No lolly. No job to mock. From tons of pot down to John's bong only. Too strong for Tony, only totally don't know so. <laughs> Gordon pops bonbons. John spots Bono. <laughs> Both gobs go, oh, thank you. Please uh, put your hands together for Mr. Luke and Ice. This time my heart broke, I was working out my donor heart by swimming laps in a crater full of rainwater. I have nothing to say, said a boy standing at the edge of the crater, or nobody wants to hear it anyway. I wanted to yell and tell him not to get discouraged, but I had swallowed a duck call and so could only quack. He left and never painted the triptych he was supposed to. <laughs> This is the first poem, it's called My Friend. My friend, your irresponsibility and your unhappiness delight me. Your financial problems and your expanding waistline are a constant source of relief. I am so happy you drink more than I do, and that you don't seem to enjoy it as much. <laughs> when I hear you being arrogant and argumentative, my heart leaps. Your nihilism is fast becoming the richest source of meaning in my life, and it is my pleasure to watch you speaking harshly to others. When you gossip about our mutual acquaintances, I sigh with satisfaction. Your childish impatience 
delights me. The day you threw a tantrum in the middle of the supermarket was the happiest day of my life. Sometimes you say something which reveals you to be rather stupid, and I love you then, but not as much as I love you when you are callously manipulative. I spat in pain, sorry. Your promiscuity is like a faithful dog at my side. When you talk about your petty affairs, you try to make them sound grand and important. I cherish your gaucheness and your flippancy. At times it seems you are actually without a sense of humour. I bless the day I met you. <laughs> you bully people younger and weaker than you, and when others tell me about this, I am pleased. <laughs> Sometimes I think you are incapable of love, and I am filled with the contentment of waking on a Saturday morning to realise I don't have to go to work. I often suspect that you do not even like me, and my laughter overflows like water from a blocked cistern. <laughs> She was found in a gully, Nordic features and a beige ratatouille of sick in an ark. This is yogic, anorak in the hedge or henge and the piss tang of celeriac. He was a Whitechapel rake and she, well, no vestal virgin nor blood donor. Ergo, the sight of furtive, furtive bayonets and paving the colour of wet tongue. Talk is loose when the fog comes down. Archaic argo, hybrid whispering. Dangling from a silo, the cunt with a pink ukulele can hone his ego on my fist. <laughs> you know, it was the first time that one was ever laugh. <laughs> Liverpool Street Station arrives flat-packed, instructions enclosed. I never realised flat caps were so popular amongst the under-40s, until I drank in the Griffin, Leonard Street. One pint of flowers, IPA, one brush, one Bex, one bowl of nuts, mixed. Avoid the pig and onions. <laughs> Crossing Great Eastern Street at the corner of Curtain Road, you find yourself triangulated by three East End estate agencies. Each one trying to outdo the other. Foxton, Sterling Ackroyd, City and Urban. When one buys a set of multicoloured comfy chairs, another installs a light box. <laughs> I was too young for rave. I am too old for new rave. And I, have taken to, and I have taken to wearing leisure trousers at home <laughs> with elasticated waistband. I pad around the flat like a tiger, the city outside. I do not believe in irony, just multiple levels of recognition. A democratic onion, if you will. Are there any pedants in the audience? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> this one is for you. <laughs> This is, for, this is for people who really hate the overuse of a particular word on television. And, uh, and this poem is called Iconic. <laughs> and I dedicate this to my father. <laughs> greatest pedant of them all. Sign language is iconic. Polysemy is iconic. Mark is iconic. Iconic is the new ironic. Aerosmith is iconic. Louis Armstrong is iconic. Neil Armstrong is iconic. Psy Harmonics is iconic. Iconic is chronic. Rocky is iconic. The design of a Jeep is iconic. The design of a Jeep is iconic but crap. Just the way Volkswagen is iconic but crap. This is iconic. Santana is iconic. Morrissey is iconic. The resulting furniture is iconic. Everyone agrees that this site is iconic. The shot of Mario in mid-leap into his swanky new racer against the plain white backdrop. I mean, that shit is iconic. Thank you very much.
myself up into the mold. I gotta focus. So I think poetry things. I think of a mountain. I think of a stream. I think of I think of a book of poetry, and then I kind of project. I project onto the stage. That's the, that's that man on stage right now. That's that man on stage, and then I see myself. And then I become that, I become that stream, I become that mountain, I become that poetry collection. And then it, I, and then something happens. And I, I was gonna start talking about my trousers. That's not. I don't wanna go there. Sorry. <laughs> Shut up.